The plague, also known as the pestilence, bubonic plague, and the black death, has plagued people for, well, for forever. Outbreaks of this deadly disease have been noted since the beginning of recorded history, and there are even still outbreaks today. Today's cases aren't as deadly thanks to modern medicine, but what would it have been like to get the plague in medieval times before we knew how to treat it? During the largest outbreak of the plague, it's estimated that 75 to 200 million people across Europe, Asia, and Africa may have died. And modern historians think that because record keeping was so poor that the actual number might be even higher. Close living quarters and quarantining entire families together helped quickly spread this deadly and painful disease. The bubonic plague is a disease that comes from bacteria that live in the soil. While in the dirt, the bacteria isn't harmful to humans. Once it's picked up by rats, though, it morphs into a different and more deadly form. This would still not be so bad. Rats rarely bite humans after all, but fleas then bite the rats and pick up the bacteria. Fleas were very common in medieval households, which is bad news since when fleas bite humans, the bacteria gets injected directly into the bloodstream. And fleas were a big problem for your average medieval peasant in their day-to-day -day life. Once in the bloodstream, the bacteria quickly moves to the lymph glands, where the bacteria multiply and cause the glands to swell with infection. This creates one of the telltale signs of the plague, big black swellings at the sites of the lymph glands. These are called bubos and are extremely painful. The bubo is what gives the disease its iconic name, the bubonic plague. Once the bacteria have multiplied in the glands, they enter the bloodstream and go straight to the heart. From there, they can quickly spread to the rest of the body. This causes everything from delirium to fever to raging thirst. The lymph glands continue to swell up until eventually they burst, both inside and outside the body. It is not a pretty sight. Also not a pretty sight, plague doctors who wore long waxed leather coats and large beaked masks filled with herbs to try and ward off the disease. Plague doctors had little to no scientific backing for their cures. They tried crazy ideas like applying piping hot stuffed onions to try to burn off the bubos. As you can probably probably guess it didn't help and often made things worse. Inside the body, the burst debris from the gland enters the bloodstream, leading to clots that gather in the fingers and toes, cutting off the circulation and causing them to go black. The debris continues to clot in the bloodstream, eventually causing major organ failure and then death. The plague also causes pneumonia, which means a plague victim will be coughing up a storm that's full of plague bacteria. It enters the air and right into the lungs of another victim. It's estimated that the medieval plague killed between 30 to 50 percent of Europe's population. And while the mortality rate was potentially as high as 75 percent, that does mean that some people survived the disease. And modern science has shown that those people went on to live longer, healthier lives after the plague. <laughs> If you do get bit by a flea, that bit a rat that was rolling around in the dirt, don't worry too much. Modern medicine knows exactly how to treat the disease, so the odds of you ending up like a medieval peasant are slim.